Hello. <laughs> Čekaj, samo ćemo da se odmaknemo malo kao da... Pa ja neću, a ti slobodno možeš. Ok. Samo, uh, probaj sad da provjerim da li se vidi na kameri, ok? Hello, hello, um, and welcome to Samantha Sundays. Um, today, oh yeah, just to introduce what I always do, uh, whoever didn't, uh, whoever uh, never tuned in, um, Samantha Sundays is a radio show, so to say, that happens on every Sunday, uh, usually from four till six, but because of the corona, uh, times now from three to five uh, and every Sunday I have a guest uh, and uh, we talk for the first hour for the second hour we uh, play music uh, usually it's a playlist from uh, the guest uh, so today on this beautiful Sunday we have Alexander Damjanovic uh, so I'll just let him introduce himself first so um, hi <laughs> My name is Alexander, but um, it's a bit difficult to pronounce. So usually people here call me Alex. And um, I come from Belgrade. I'm 26 years old, about to be 27 at the end of the year. And um, I live in Breda actually right now. I've been living there for about two years now. And yeah, for anyone who is interested, Maya is my friend. And we actually have... Um, some mutual friends in Belgrade and we've known for e about each other for a while and then when I moved here we actually got the chance to spend more time together and yeah that brings me here basically <laughs> thank you yes so um yeah uh let's just like we uh yeah usually well sometimes uh yeah we have a very serious conversation the my guest and me but like uh, Alexander maybe decided to just make this a chat and to keep it fun <laughs> so um, basically but let, let's start with some like basic questions that I uh, we agreed that I wanted to ask you anyways uh, and it can be fun so uh, you know um, uh, so because I find it interesting that like uh, usually the the people from let's say the Balkans or like yeah uh, that I know here uh, uh, came for the school uh, because yeah I studied here so I guess that's always you kind of get in touch with the people who study as well but so you came for work can you tell us a bit more yeah about that it's whatever you want to share so it, I think it kind of makes sense right because like if you're a student then most of your relationships are gonna be like with other students because you have something in common and then yeah it's just like a similar circle of people and then when you actually start working you're in a different circle mm -hmm. and um, basically I think it's actually hard to maybe bypass those two circles because for example I've been living here for two years but I don't know a lot of people who are students 
and the other way around, I suppose, simply because, yeah, your rhythm of life is maybe different or something. But um, um, I actually finished my studies in Belgrade. I finished uh, the School of Pharmacy and I got my master's degree over there. And I was thinking even during my school days if I should like continue my studies outside of the country or not. But basically, yeah, our, our college in Belgrade was good enough even for like EU standards. So I could just live there and finish it there because in all reality, it is cheaper. And I come from Belgrade, so it kind of made sense. But then once I finished that, I was actually uh, just trying to get a job in Belgrade and see how that goes. And in the meantime, I was looking for some PhD studies outside of the country because like research in Serbia is not that good. And um, that actually brought me to Belgium and I was in Belgium only for like a couple of weeks trying to like score a PhD over there and talking with some professors and stuff. And at the same time, there was like this job fair uh, at the faculty of pharmacy. I don't know if you actually know about that. Have I haven't told you. So it was like super spontaneous because I was actually there to talk about PhDs and I actually knew one girl from Belgrade who was studying in Belgium at that college. And she was like, hey, we have this like job fair coming up this weekend. Why don't you just swing by and maybe you just, I don't know, have like a cool chat with someone and then see what happens. So it's not like I had a lot to do. I was just like spending some days there and like eating Belgium chocolate and French fries and like trying to <laughs> to like chat with professors. And sometimes it went nice. Sometimes people were like, what the hell does this guy want from us? You know, <laughs> he just doesn't want to let go. I would go like three times in a row to chat with the same professor trying to like prove my point why I should be there. So I was like, yeah, I might as well go and chat like at the job fair and maybe I actually meet someone fun. So I was there just listening to like some lectures and they have like those booths. Every company has a booth in the hallway and then you can approach and get some souvenirs, you know, like business cards or whatever. And I chatted with like 10 companies and yeah, like I was gonna go home and there was one more booth that I didn't check out and I was already getting a headache and I was like, should I do it or not? Just like cut my losses. And I was like, yeah, if I already talked with 10 people, might as well talk with one more. And that was actually um, the company where I'm working right now. They gave me like this cool vibe. They gave me this business card to call. So I did and we had like a phone interview and um, I was actually already on my way back to Belgrade because I wanted to spend there only like three weeks and I didn't have much more money to spend, I don't know, six months in Belgium. So I went home, but they were still like interested in me. So we were chatting and then they asked me if I can come for an interview. So I came to Belgrade on a Wednesday and I was already booking a flight for Monday n so I could ha have the interview. And I was like, OK, fine, let's see where this takes me. I was thinking like the Netherlands are right next to Belgium and if I'm okay moving here might as well see what's out there and in my head it was more like a step so that I can find a PhD more easily you know like you're at th that place and you have a job and then you can explore from that position so I went for the job interview and I really really liked the, the hiring managers at the time I felt like there was this bond and that made me super happy so I accepted the deal and I packed my things and I came back in like a couple of weeks later I knew I was going to get the job and I ha just had like loads of time to like have fun with my friends. So I just went home for three weeks and I partied and, you know, drank and met up with everyone I could and had like five go away celebrations and stuff. And yeah, then I actually went there, started working and over like six months or so, I kind of started changing my mind, thinking that PhD is something that I actually might not want to pursue anymore because I kind of found out more how life looks like if you're a PhD student in comparison to like having a nice job that you actually like. And uh, then that's when Corona happened as well. So like my uh, options were very limited and it seemed like a risky move to like move somewhere else again just for PhD studies. So I stayed, I stayed where I am and actually I'm super happy where I am right now and I'm not gonna go back to PhDs unless I fund them for myself and I have the full control of what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. So long story short, yeah, that's that's how I got there. And yeah, do you actually have like uh, any other people who have like jobs and stuff here or is it like mostly students? How does it work for you? Um, I mean, considering that I'm not a student anymore, <laughs> 
now the the things are changed. I mean, but when I was studying, like when I just came here, of course, then uh, yeah, uh, I mean, all of my friends were students. And then now, of course, all those students are not <laughs> students anymore. Um, but yeah, besides you, I think I just know one more person who came actually to work. Like, um, so uh, there was this girl who was also on the show one day. Uh, her name is Anya, uh, and she's from Poland. And she came uh, to work first. So and then after a couple of years, she realized, oh, this is actually cool, and uh, she found something she wanted to study. So then she started her her studies. But yeah, so uh, but just in generally, yeah, no, I it's it's not that I n know a lot of people who are, yeah, working. I don't know. So like, how is it like for you this transition? You know, like from from school to work, like. Yeah, how do you feel about that? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, can I say I don't want to talk about it? <laughs> no, just kidding, just kidding. No, um, it's uh, it's weird because um, it's, yeah, like you are a part of an institution. I mean, I guess everybody who finished has that feeling. Um, so you're a part of an institution which is kind of like safe. Um, and then you feel safe because whatever happens, you're part of the institution, right? Uh, and now all of a sudden, kind of, you are not part of an institution. So you have to do everything yourself. And like, and of course, I mean, for example, Willem de Koning didn't really have a specific schedule. So you could really, you already, back then you were thrown into the machine of planning your, your days how you wanted to. So, so that actually now looking back, that really helped because I can I really know how to organize myself right now. But at the same time, it's it's weird because, for example, for me, s especially like I would always go to school to work on the computers because they were so much nicer than the computer I would have at home, uh, and all these programs and all that, which is n now not available. So I have to buy my own computer. I have to buy my own Adobe. I, you know, and all these things that like just were there, now they're not there, and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> so things like that, and um, and I guess yeah, just also it's just weird. It's just like you start. I mean, like I usually, I anyways, I'm a person who questions everything, which is not the best thing to do, but I do. And now especially, I question everything. Um, so, but yeah, it's it. I think um, those these times that are the weirdest are the best to learn from and to develop and I think it every time this kind of shit happens I level up so uh, I'm also trying to calm myself when I look back uh, when I was that was four years ago when I yeah no five years ago so when I s uh, finished high school uh, I decided to do a gap year which was literally unimaginable <laughs> especially in Serbia so back then I really wanted to travel because, uh, you know, I would like uh, go to, I w went to Estonia to do an uh, exchange year when I was in high school. And then I was a bit in Serbian high school, a bit of Estonian high school. So I just couldn't like pick one place to be in peace. Um, uh, and then, yeah, I finished high school and I was like, hmm, like, everybody you know has to decide what they're gonna do to the rest of their lives and, and stuff like that and i was just like what because i was like so confused like and we were just so young i mean still but back then even more and um i just didn't feel like it and um so basically i just wanted to yeah check my options go to different universities check them out research so just take my time basically um, and I wanted to travel, but then, of course, my parents wouldn't support that and uh, y in any way, like mentally or financially or en in any way. So I ended up working full time uh, and just saving money. And I think that was also a year where, like, it was really weird because everybody was studying and everybody was 
you know, they, they had their shit together. Nobody had their shit together. But, but you know, everybody seemed like, or like, you know, try to try to give the picture of they have the, their shit together. And I was the one working and like, especially, I mean, I was not freaking out because I knew what I was doing. But back then I lived with my parents and they were in a kind of like divorce thing and everything was just a bit weird and then my mom of course was freaking out being like oh yeah you're never gonna study but if you don't study now you know and I'm like what I'm definitely not gonna like stay work full time in Serbia where you get one hour per one euro per hour you know like no but this is what I need right now you know to just you know it I had a plan I had a plan but just nobody believed in it and then uh, so that was really hard uh Exactly, because it didn't, it, at the first sight, it didn't seem like I had a plan, you know. And, uh, yeah, uh, but also I learned that it's important to not listen to people at that point, but just do your thing, especially not your parents. And then... <laughs> I thought this was, like, uh, an episode about me, but uh, <laughs> you're doing so good, like, <laughs> really nice. <laughs> no, no, I really like your story. I would just like add one thing. I think um, it makes sense, like what you say. Um, it's like you are uh, very open-minded and you question things. So you want to know what else is out there before you make any decision to commit to something. And I guess when you're more open than people around you, then you find yourself like being on the outside of things because everyone is doing one thing and you're doing something different and i think that also has to do with like parents because yeah when they're raising a child they're doing it for the first time right so they also don't know what's best so the only thing that they know is what they did and what they see other children your age doing so if they see you doing something differently i think it's like coming out of fear of like something going wrong and i think it's like also hard you know like for parents and for friends to like be supportive if if they're not equally open as you are because even if they have, like, the best intentions, like, giving you advices and stuff, it still might be, like, the wrong advice for you because you're a bit different than, like, someone else. Yeah. But, yeah. So, you run your way, working, saving money, and then... <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't have asked because, you know, like... <laughs> and then, um, yeah, and, and then I, I figured, you know, like, I made this, like, map of all the universities that I kind of wanted to go to, but I had to pick, you know? So I was like, okay, you know what? Like, I'm not gonna make this too hard on myself. I'm just going to the Netherlands. Not sure why, <laughs> not sure. <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, and then I applied to uh, three, I think, universities here, and I got accepted in two, and then I chose Rotterdam, because it, I don't know, I'd never been before in Rotterdam, but it just felt right. So basically, yes, it's a very weird period right now as well, because, for example, talking about parents, yeah, like, uh, I'm in a period, for example, right now where I don't really talk to my mom, uh, neither my dad, so I sometimes text them that I'm alive, and that's about it, and uh they respect that, which I'm also surprised that any Balkan parents respect anything. So <laughs> like, I'm happy about that. But basically, it's just like, you know, like I have a job that like I, I uh, how to say it? Yeah, pay my pay my bills. And uh, that's not something I'm, I'm I want to do for the rest of my life, of course. And uh, yeah, like talking, let's say to my mom again, it's the same story. Like she's like, oh, yeah just that's a safe option just uh, be there do that you know uh, uh you know and like that's what you said before is that's the fear that like oh yeah something's gonna go wrong or don't risk it don't live literally just like work and you know but i think that's a different generation of uh so how how's your mom about that because we talked today also a little bit <laughs> about your mom um my mom is also definitely coming from a different generation and uh, she grew up in a small city, almost a village. And I was born in like a city of two, three million people in a different time. So like right from the start, you have like dif this different perspective and you definitely feel that when you're growing up. But um, I don't know, like we definitely have our differences and like strong emotions and sometimes we argue and stuff. But there is like a lot of love going around. So 
yeah it's never anything that's like very intense or that we do not uh, talk with each other which i'm actually very glad for but yeah it's definitely sometimes hard uh fitting in different perspectives but what i do see in both of us is like with time we're both kind of changing in our own ways and we in a way maybe start to understand each other a bit more and all this sounds like ideal but like in, in in reality it's still like very big like work in progress but i think there are some like healthy boundaries and like some level of respect um for like choices and she doesn't get in the way of my choices and i definitely don't get in the way of hers if anything like trying to be supportive and maybe it's a bit easier for me to be supportive of her because her challenges seem easier um to me to like be supportive with simply because maybe i know a bit more than she does of everything that's out there but like uh yeah when i'm having something um in the past it was difficult because she would try to give advices from her perspective and that wouldn't be good for me so it would be a bit difficult to you know reconcile two sides but um with the with the years going by i see her like uh not clinging so hard and like just letting me like make my choices and she just like thinking yeah if she can help in any way about that and i guess just like over the years my choices just were right you know like in my opinion and in hers and that kind of also built trust from her side but yeah it's easy when you have common goals that you agree upon you know if i was if i was a bit different if if i were like uh working in some weird jobs at least that appear weird or like um i don't know had some things out of the box a bit more maybe she would have a, a harder time dealing with that but like yeah it's it's fine the way it is right now but um so what were like the good sides for you like you know coming here and all this process that's going on so you told me about some challenges and of course everyone has those but like what were the positives of it all? Well, that's a good good question. Um, oof. Well, basically, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. There definitely, of course, are absolutely. I think like um, I became very independent. I mean, I was also before, but of course, living with your parents, that's you're never independent when you're living with your parents. So uh, I was really, um, yeah, when I was in, Est in Estonia, for example, I lived with a family, so it was a host family, but it was kind of living by yourself because it's, yeah, it's like, and especially like the family I was uh, with, they were very, you know, everybody was doing their own thing. It was three kids and, and the parents and like the, the, the kids were kind of my age. So we were, and then there was a little one, but like, you know, so, so I was already there. I was like, ooh, like freedom question mark <laughs> so it kind of gave me a little bit of you know how it could look like or like because yeah yeah it was just so different and and then i was really like i know i want to move away like i know i want to like i don't want to study in belgrade i you know i just knew so so uh yeah definitely like living here by myself finding a place by myself you know like it was just I don't know, so beautiful. I love it, you know, just like, yeah, you decide. And I love to decide for myself. Um, uh, and also, I mean, I think also it, it affected being here. I, and I see it with a lot of other people, you know, when we, we are here in first year, everybody's so scared and like everybody's so like normal. And then, I don't know, it's really this, this country which is so like plain and, and flat. And there's not like, you know, like, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it just gives you freedom to go crazy. At least with me, it was like that uh, and go crazy in a good way. So like, you know, I, I didn't, I, yeah, because here, you know, for example, you go somewhere, nobody cares how you really look. I mean, you know, nobody's gonna, if, if you look like super crazy outfit and crazy hair and everybody's gonna be like, oh my God, this is so cool. You're so cool, girl. You know, I'm like, ah, yes, you know, and then, I don't know, I always had this thing when, you know, when you would go somewhere at somebody's house or somewhere, like, like you would, like, I would be, yeah, you know, Maya, like, 
weird, you know? And like, I never felt really like accepted or like appreciated in that sense. And, and also not just that, but also like with families or like older people, you know, it was always be like, everybody would mind your business. Like, oh, you gained weight or, oh no, you're too skinny. Or like, you're, you should cut your hair or you should leave your hair on. Like everybody would mind your business, even if they wouldn't be asked. And here it's just, yeah, nobody <laughs> cares. And I also appreciate that. So I think that are some of the positive things. I mean, there's many more as well, but like, and also, for example, I'm vegetarian, so I have much, uh, 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 and that's something like banal, like something really like, oh yeah, whatever. But no, like, I'm uh, yeah, I'm having such a e easier time here to feed myself <laughs> than I had in Serbia, for example. But what's for you, for example? Um, um, like you mentioned about meeting people who are open-minded, and that's definitely true. For example, in Belgrade, all of my friends were mo my age, and if someone was like four years older or younger, that would still be okay, but it was kind of like the borderline. You didn't go, you know, bigger than that. Whereas here, like, uh, the average lifespan of people I hang out with is like 50 years. So, like, one of my best friends is 65. Another very close friend is like 50 and I have like a bunch of other people in their 50s and 40s that um, I'm actually close with and I consider them my friends and I, I really love them and I think they love me as well. And to me that was like one of the best things I guess because yeah you just get to hear like how people who are older than you also live, how they observe things and you can like hear so many smart things from them and enjoy in life in like uh yeah ways that maybe you wouldn't if you were just hanging with like someone your age but at the same time like I've, i found them to be very close to my character so like i love going out meeting new people as well and back home it wasn't something that families did it wasn't something that parents did or like even grandparents that would be something totally bizarre whereas here I have like friends who are in their 50s and they have kids who are teenagers or like 16, 18 and they go to festivals with their kids together and they party together and you know like I think that's like one of the best things that I've seen because there's just like this totally new level of understanding and finding a common language between generations you know. So for example that's something that I like a lot and like yeah on the on the business side of things like jobs are much better for pharmacies for far pharma students like here than back home in Belgrade because we don't have so many companies and stuff and then I was able to get like a really nice job here and not only get like uh, good conditions but like also a very healthy atmosphere where people are tolerant and accepting of being different and um, yeah like appreciating when someone's smart and proactive whereas back home in Belgrade yeah if you were like that then you would actually be shunned away because people would be afraid for their jobs maybe like doing better than them and being a threat and so on so I think like overall it's like a healthier atmosphere at work as well but yeah I'm like um, still kind of waiting for for the fun stuff to kick in waiting for <laughs> corona to pass and then actually be able to meet more people and spend more time outside but okay so in it's been how many years for you now that you've been on the move uh, on the move means what just like um yeah you mentioned like from high school right that you were already studying in estonia so it's been like 10 years right well, uh, okay, so basically I've been on the move since birth. <laughs> but um, so we lived a little bit in, so I was born in Germany <coughs> and then we moved a little bit. So we were a bit in Germany and then uh, and then we moved to Serbia because my grandparents from my mom's side were in Belgrade. But my dad was always, his whole family was in Bosnia. And then we moved to Germany, Serbia, Germany, Serbia, all four years, like, uh, to the, uh, yeah. Every four years she would move. And then, uh, uh, and then in first year of gym high school, like, gymnasia, so in Serbia, it's like gymnasia, uh, I was, like, 
I decided to go back to Belgrade because I think in Germany, uh, to be quite honest, I don't think I was appreciated enough in a way that like, so I was going to, uh, in, s in Germany, for example, you have um, gymnasium, uh, realschule, no, hauptschule. And I was going to the middle one, um, even though like I was for two years the like the best in my whole generation, they wouldn't transfer me to gymnasium because apparently my German was not good enough, but like my German was good enough, just <laughs> putting it out there, you know? So so I, I always felt like I was a second, uh, second class citizen and um, I would never be good enough uh, to go there to university or to whatever, because if you go to Realschule, for example, you need much more years to to get to university level, so to say, than to than to go to gim finish gymnasium. So I was just like, "Fuck that! I'm going back. I'm going back to Serbia." Uh, and yeah, and and then I went three. No, I went two years in Serbia. Also didn't like it there. <laughs> Also didn't like it there because like totally new system, totally different people, and and then in second year already I was preparing to leave to Estonia in third year, so my whole third year I spent in Estonia, then came back, finished high schools in Belgrade, uh, so then I was two years in Belgrade, and then I came here, uh, and then here in third year I went for half a year to the UK for internship. And yeah, <laughs> now I'm here. <laughs> so, so do you feel like a second class citizen in this country? Um, um, I mean, no, not right now, to be quite honest, because I think it's always different when when you came to study somewhere, because I think people appreciate you so much more. Because, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, you studied here, whatever, which, yeah, it's it's a bit ridiculous, but whatever. Um, so no, not really. And I think also a lot of times uh, uh, when I Dutch, you know, um, people are so excited to speak English, you know, and they're like, oh, expats, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really until now, I never really felt, you know, like uh, different in a bad way. Um, uh, so people are usually really like curious and, you know, like, yeah, uh, <laughs> so, but I think it has a lot to do with, with the different culture, for example, in Germany and Austria, let's, let's say, especially in Germany, you have this whole culture of Gastarbeiter, which is like, uh, yeah, guest worker. So, so they really, I think, still now look down on those people uh, who are mostly from our countries and the Balkans and, yeah, the, the, the eastern part of, of Europe. Um, and yeah, I, I think here there's not a lot of gastarbeiter in general, so they just, yeah, they just are expats, and that's cute. <laughs> there's like a vibe, you're educated, and then you're appreciated more, and like you, you have a purpose. And yeah, you're good for the country, and I think they also look at that as well, like are you gonna, yeah, if you're gonna help them out, like if you're gonna contribute, or are you gonna be like a parasite? But like, if you meet every Dutch person, I, I I can guess this is how the first conversation goes. Hello, my name is Alexander. Oh, hello, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Serbia. Ah, oh, Serpi. Yeah, yeah, from Serbia. Oh, nice. Ah, and are you studying or working here? Uh, working. Oh, okay, nice. And how long have you been here? Oh, for two years. Ah, oh, okay. Do you like it here? <laughs> yes, yes, I like it a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's a nice country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it go something like that? <laughs> <laughs> something like that. No, a lot of times, uh, I mean, I guess it's not o just here, but a lot of times it's like, oh, Serbia, Siberia, uh, Syria. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, definitely. But of course, that depends on the person. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame it on the whole states. But I definitely get like a little bit of confusion, yeah, for sure, uh, about, about the name still yeah for example i don't get that like when i say serfi they always tie it to yugoslavia and that's like a benchmark for them there's like this big difference if you say you're from croatia or like from serbia oh, yeah. and i think that's like mostly because yeah most of the people here have never been to serbia and they only like hear about wars and stuff 
and like for Croatia, it's like, oh, I've been there last summer. Like, oh, it's such beautiful beaches. And then already you have something in common and then you're like, oh yeah, I know I've been to that place, such a nice beach. And yeah, it's like a different vibe. I mean, not that everyone, anyone thinks anything badly of me, but like I simply notice like a gap in the conversation when I say I'm from Serbia, people just don't know what to say because they don't know a lot about the country. Whereas if you mention Croatia, it, for them, it's like uh, something more familiar, I guess. So any fun moments, like any awkward moments like that happened when you were like chatting with people here that you were like, oh, my God, that was so funny. Like, like funny in, in what sense? Can you be more specific? Something that, yeah, just something that like, you know, made you laugh. Um, <coughs> something that made me laugh. I don't, I don't, I don't know really. Like, what, what made me laugh here? I, l I, I, I don't laugh now. Just kidding. I entertain myself mainly. So, <laughs> but um, what made me laugh? I don't know. I think what what makes me laugh the most is kind of yeah, I guess in the end myself but more of like the reactions that I notice in myself. Like for example, if we talk about music, right? Which we're gonna uh, talk, well, which we go you're gonna uh, listen to later in uh, like about 10 minutes. It's, um, for example, uh, okay, what makes me laugh now? Here we go. So I have my friend Senka and uh, Senka me, we're like, okay, so Senka is like, uh, quite like a, a, a sh not shy, but like a quiet person, you know, like very thoughtful, very considerate, you know, like uh, first things, then says, and all that, and uh, and also li listens to very, uh, you know, like uh, thoughtful music and like uh, cool, experimental, alternative, uh, very, you know, arty, uh, and then me, you know, I. I love like techno drum and bass like ghetto those type of uh, things and like uh, and also quite alternative stuff experimental and and then like you know when we were in uh, serbia because we were both from belgrade and we knew each other from before and then we both moved moved here in different years but still we both moved to rotterdam and then we found each other like we have this moments like once a month approximately where we where we meet we eat either pizza or sushi there is no in between either pizza or sushi and we just put on the worst serbian music on and we just cry and like it's just this like weird weird diaspora moment and like okay no it's not every month it's once in like a full moon or something you know like and then yeah, there we go. <laughs> well, anyways, it's sometimes, and we just like listen to uh, mainly. Okay, I don't know if I can say this officially because this is gonna be archived, but we mainly listen to Zobi. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not proud of that, but like, anyways, <laughs> I'm not proud of that. <laughs> but we listen to Zobi, and I don't know. Are you gonna? Is there a song from him later on? Maybe. Okay. Anyways. Um, and uh, he's like this Serbian producer who is, yeah, just doing, I don't even know what what kind of music is that. It's like, it's turbo folk, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a mixture of like Eastern influence, like maybe a bit of Turkish music. And then like trying to, yeah, pr pr hip hop as well. And trying pr to portray that gangster life with money, uh, drugs and hoes and like living like a king. Uh, so yeah, that's how I would describe it. Don't you know, like uh, especially like the newer songs, analyzing them. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. Okay, we noticed that there is um, a lot of like, uh, yeah, this this notion of gastarbeiter and diaspora and all that. I mean, because it is kind of like a wave happening. I mean, from decades ago, that like people just leave. Whoever can leave, they leave. Um, and, um, and he, for example, like talks about that in his songs and like, uh, and that I think found, I found that interesting and I would like, I would never listen to this in Serbia. Like you have to like chain me to a chair and put it on my ear for me to listen to it. But like here it just makes sense. You know? 
and it's I think that's the funniest thing, you know, and like I think that's the funniest thing. Like what happened? Like and also like uh, 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 what we list, like what you know, Anna Nikolic, what we talked to, what we talked about today as well, like Anna Nikolic or like all these, like yeah, Turbo Folk in general. I hate it. I like hated it so much. I I just know because like you know in Serbia, I mean you know it as well. Like you go to any kind of party. And I mean, I actually don't know how it is with you, but like with me in high school, it was like you go to every, ev- any kind of party you go, especially house parties, and then they would start with like cool music, and then, then everybody would get drunk and put on the, the turbo folk shit, and I would just freak, I would just go home, you know? So like, I really, really didn't like it because I, yeah, I don't know, I guess because it was, there was nothing else. Um, it was just the norm, like, um, and then, and then when I came here, and I kind of opened up myself more to it, and like, I don't know. <laughs> it's totally the same for me. Like, I never wanted to go to parties where they played that kind of music because it was everywhere and on the radios, like in the clubs, and uh, it was like mainstream, so everyone was in that. And I guess that was like the problem because it wasn't the music that much. It was all the people who would gather around that music, and then I wouldn't like that atmosphere because I didn't like that kind of people that much and that kind of fun um so in my spare time i would almost never ever like listen to that kind of music because i would listen it so much everywhere i would go that like in my own time i was just like about something else but now when i'm served with everything else and like mm, i don't hear like my language or something like that and then i can just hear the songs without like looking at people it's actually fun music you know it's like fun to like listen and to listen to the words the lyrics whatever and sometimes they make zero sense and sometimes they're just like for fun so yeah i think that's why i like it now as well more than i did when i was back home so yeah we're gonna play some of those things so the list i've prepared is like relatively new newer um so yeah i'm gonna see what's there Okay, so should we crack on the music then? Let's crack on. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Thank you too.
Sad im tako nešto i razmišljam kako nam je bilo lepo i stvarno je bilo lepo i bilo je lepo, bilo je lepo. Samo što ja dosta u poslednje vreme sedim i razmišljam. Je li ovo popo? Sedim tako nešto i razmišljam kako nam je bilo lepo i stvarno je bilo lepo i bilo je lepo, bilo je lepo. Samo što ja dosta u poslednje vreme sedim i razmišljam kako nam je bilo lepo i stvarno je bilo lepo i bilo je lepo. Ali ja nemam ništa od toga. I ako nemam ništa od toga razmišljam, možda smo bili previše mladi, nismo znali što nas je snašlo. Vrtim film u glavi gledam ko je kriv, ali na kraju nije ni važno ko je kriv. Ni to ništa nije važno. Nismo znali, ljubav da čuvamo, da štetimo.